Hi everyone, I hope that you're doing well. My name is Alina, I'm a sleep coach and this is my Sleep Talks channel. Those of you who know me and who are following uh, my uh, YouTube channel know that I haven't been posting videos for a long time. And there are several reasons to that. And one of them is um, I was actually pretty busy at my day job. Uh, I was also working on uh, my website, which is uh, live already. And I'm going to share, share it with you today. And the third reason is kind of embarrassing. And this is something that I'm going to talk today uh, about. And it is perfectionism. At some point, I just thought that I had to create really good videos. They have to be useful. Uh, you all had to like them. And uh, this kind of chase for, for perfection led me to not uh, actually doing any videos. And once I actually spot myself on it and I decided that this is a really good topic to start uh, doing videos again, because perfectionism and sleep and insomnia are so connected. And I believe that perfectionism is something that contributes to the development of insomnia. And, uh, and today I'm going to explain you this uh, connection between sleep and perfectionism. And also I'm going to walk you through uh, my process, how I uh, went from the place where I was so dependent on this result of getting perfect sleep uh, to the place where, where I stopped being a uh, perfectionist. And, I, and this is actually that led me uh, to abandon the whole battle and start starting sleeping uh, and not even thinking about sleep. Uh, and uh, this is all that I'm going to share with you today in this uh, video. And I hope that you will find it useful, but you might not find it useful. Let's see how it goes. Uh, and before we begin, I just wanted to, uh, to share with you the link to my website. It is uh, sleepcoach.sk. SK stands for Slovakia because this is where I'm based. And uh, you can go directly there and you can read uh, uh, my general introduction. I also put there my personal insomnia story. So if you are wondering how, uh, how my personal journey went, and uh, basically how I approach this, this is something that, that you might find useful. But uh, that said, then we can uh, basically uh, move to the topic of perfectionism and insomnia. So basically uh, when it comes to this problem, I think we need to remember, like a reminder ourselves, what is like how sleep and insomnia works. So basically there are two components in it. Uh, first is that sleep is beyond our control and uh, when we start trying to control it, when we start chasing sleep, it goes away. It starts being elusive, we become more worried and basically the more we are reaching for it, the more it's further away from us. Uh, the second thing is that perfect sleep doesn't exist at all. And that means that uh, that it is, it is completely normal to want to have like a, you know, to want to feel good, to want to have like a good satisfying sleep. Uh, but this chase makes us want to uh, run for unachievable goal. And because perfect sleep is not something that um, is not realistic. And I will, I will explain you why I think that is. So if I ask 10 people, uh, what is an ideal, sl ideal sleep for them, I would probably get 10 different answers. For someone, it could be the perfect sleep is uh, having like eight hours of uninterrupted sleep. Someone would say that uh, they uh, need to feel uh, rested and refreshed the next day. Someone will say that uh, the perfect sleep is the sleep where you get enough of uh, deep sleep or whatever high quality sleep, whatever that means. And uh, so you can see like for each person, the perfection, the ideal is very different. Uh, at the same time, uh, there is also like within this, um, within the timeline, uh, the definition of what is perfect sleep can change for one person. So for example, today you might be, uh, you, you might want to get like eight hours of sleep. Tomorrow that can change. Tomorrow you might start like craving the, uh, that you will fall asleep uh, within 15 minutes. 
and the next day or after like after a week or so that you might want some other kind of like a goal that will define what the perfect sleep is. So I just want to show that the perfect sleep is kind of like, like a moving target. It is uh, very arbitrary and uh, it is very subjective. You cannot really, uh, there, there is no uh, unified definition of what a perfect sleep is and no one actually knows it's so personal. Uh, so actually the idea to chase that uh, becomes uh, something that holds us back. Uh, so in other words, yeah, like perfect sleep is basically an illusion. And oftentimes this chase for, for perfection is something that uh, makes us stuck. This is why we cannot move forward. Uh, uh, we cannot overcome our fear. We cannot uh, just you know, usually people refer like, I just want to not care about it. This is, and perfectionism, I believe this is something that holds people in that place where it just, they keep running for that perfect sleep. And um, uh, there are like generally like three stages that I see that uh, I personally went, went through myself. And uh, the first stage, you probably also know it, it's kind of like all or nothing thinking. It is when, uh, when you kind of like divide uh, uh, nights into two categories. There is a good night, there is a bad night. And naturally, of course, you want to have all the good nights and you don't want to have any bad nights. Uh, you perceive uh, anything that doesn't uh, meet those requirements of perfect sleep, you perceive as a failure, you begin to judge yourself, be hard on yourself. And this is something that actually creates even more trouble sleeping. And uh, you probably notice this uh, in your own behavior and how you perceive uh, your nights is that after good nights, you feel uh, like you, you celebrate this. You feel so confident. You might be uh, really victorious about that. And once uh, a bad night or you know, poor sleep uh, happens, then uh, you feel miserable. You feel, you feel defeated. You feel... Uh, completely lost uh, in that. So this kind of like all or nothing, all or nothing thinking uh, creates this kind of like a roller coaster. So you just, you just jump from one state to another. And uh, so to get from that place, uh, the next step you're probably already guessing, and it is uh, actually moving towards the, the, the spectrum thinking. And you already probably noticed that, that you know like there, there's no like black and white things. There are like a spectrum. There are several shades of gray or something like this. Um, and, and it is true because if you take, uh, let's say two good nights and two bad nights, and you will notice that none of them are actually exactly the same. So two, two nights, two good nights are not exactly the same good nights. And the same uh, is for bad nights. Um, because it's all relative. It's all on this kind of like spectrum. Something is always going to be worse. Something is always going to be better at any given point. Um, just to test this, if I would uh, ask you, what would you prefer? Like if you, if you could choose how the night goes, then, uh, and you're giving a choice, for example, to sleep seven hours or six hours, what would you choose? And let's say you choose seven hours, you're right? And like that, to chase that golden standard in sleep. Or like you are giving the choice between four hours and, and two hours. And suddenly four, hour become, uh, four hours become more favorable option among those two. Or you might have um, like a choice between like, okay, you will sleep uh, solidly uh, for, you know, for all like, let's say eight hours, but you feel really unrefreshed. Or you could choose sleeping four hours and feel great the next day. So you see how uh, it's all kind of like, it, it, it's, not, it, it's not really like so definite. So something is like perfect and, 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 and something is like totally horrible. And when we begin to kind of like define our, like put our nights or how we think about our nights on this spectrum, we suddenly find ourselves that there's always going to be something better. There's always going to be something worse. And we can practice this kind of thinking. So if you, if for example, if you happen to have, uh, let's say two hours of sleep and you feel very frustrated, 
then you could think of like maybe in the past you had even like you know uh, worse um, cases or it, it could it could be worse and of course there's always like something better but just just saying like seeing that things are not uh, just this kind of like dual so and, and and what this spectrum thinking does actually is that it lowers the bar for definition of a good night and suddenly you start uh, you, you you don't feel that pressured or feel that bad about let's say a night where you sleep like five hours or when you uh, when you feel unrefreshed the next morning uh, so like you kind of like expand the definition of what a good night is um, moving on from this stage and this stage is like uh, I would say it's it's pretty difficult to get from from that stage of all or nothing to the spectrum thinking uh, but the next stage is something that is not probably for someone who is currently in this first stage uh, and uh, it is totally fine because the whole process of recovery is pretty bumpy is it doesn't happen overnight but I'm just going to show you what is that like exactly for me uh, the recovery uh, looked like and this is the third stage uh, I call it normalizing because I couldn't find any better definition maybe you can suggest some better word or like or name for that in the comments but um, uh, for me, normalizing is about removing that bar completely, stopping evaluating your sleep at all. So while in the second stage where we were like, you know, developing this kind of spectrum thinking, we were uh, kind of like lowering that bar. We were creating, uh, we started like thinking differently about our nights. Uh, now we kind of like remove that bar completely. We, we don't think in the terms of, you know, good, bad, average, perfect, uh, miserable. It just simply does not, uh, nights, nights become just nights. That's it. They don't have any adjective to that. And this is like, this is a difficult step because you completely need to kind of unattach yourself from, from any outcome and basically become accepting of, of any sort of night that can come. Uh, and, and of course, you, you might feel somewhat uh, scared about this. You, you might think that, okay, good, now I have to like all the nights that come. And it's not really about liking, it is not, because I believe you cannot uh, fully force yourself to like something that you obviously don't like. And, and I should be honest with you, when we experience speed bumps, when, when uh, we find ourselves awake and, and worried and, or cannot fall asleep or wake up several times a night, it is not pleasant. And it's really not helpful to try to pretend it or try to change the way how we think about it with force. Of course, if it, can, if it comes naturally, then there is no problem. But it is not about liking it. It is about completely uh, accepting anything that the night brings. So uh, that means that uh, if you've slept, let's say, uh, two hours, and then the next, the next day you feel like, okay, it's also like, it's acceptable. Everything becomes acceptable. Everything becomes normal. Nothing is unusual. Nothing is abnormal. Because our brain works in a, in a way that it kind of attaches its attention to things that are not normal, things that are somehow odd. And this is why we unintentionally, uh, unintentionally uh, start uh, paying more attention to that. We start like monitoring it. We start thinking about it. But when everything, any night becomes normal, what happens is that our brain suddenly loses interest in it. It just stops paying attention. It stops paying attention to even the night where you slept like one hour or four hours or, or you were um, you woke up early and it couldn't and couldn't fall back asleep. So everything becomes acceptable, everything becomes normal and the brain feels safer. So uh, you might also like you know worry that it might be like kind of like your new normal. It is not about new normal. It's exactly about like calming your brain down by uh, kind of like, considering any sort of night a uh, safe night, normal night, nothing unusual is happening. Because in reality, insomnia cannot harm us. And, um, and the brain doesn't just, doesn't see it yet. So we need to show it. And the way how we can show it is by actually stop, uh, stopping to evaluating our sleep. And uh, this is how I believe that the whole chase is, is ending. 
not by learning how to sleep or learning how to be great, uh, a great sleeper, because no, there is no such thing as great sleeper. There is no such thing as, as like perfect sleep. So it is abandoning the whole chase. It is not trying to, uh, you know, figure it out, fix it. It's just simply uh, losing any sort of relationship with your sleep. It might sound a bit scary right now. And I think like pe people who are uh, in the place of this like, first stage of this black and white thinking, I think the next step would be really good to just kind of like start exploring your, your, um, uh, your sleep on that kind of spectrum. But once you are there for those who are already more advanced on this path, I kind of like, I would invite you to explore this possibility that how about abandoning the whole idea of evaluating your sleep or giving it some sort of like adjectives. Um, I usually uh, use this uh, analogy with breathing because many people like, they don't just, they, they, they don't think about breathing. For them, it just happens naturally. They have to eventually breathe in and the same with sleep. Eventually you will fall asleep. It is in inevitable. And um, usually we don't consider ourselves like, you know, better good sleeper, we just breathe, uh, better good breather, we just breathe. But uh, with sleep, somehow we start kind of like chasing that identity. And this is why I think that kind of normalizing any experience that happens during night, any night, any duration of your sleep can actually uh, let you out uh, from that vicious cycle. It can help break that cycle. I hope that this was very useful for you or uh, just give me uh, in the comment se section your, your thoughts, your questions, if you have any. And uh, of course, I will uh, see you next time, hopefully very soon. Bye.